Uh, one of the uses for a balanced level secondary ledger is we need to report only a period in and a different basis. And one of the prime examples is going from U.S. GAAP to IPERS. SCAP and IPERS have actually been uh, converging as, as years go by. However, there are still significant differences between U.S. GAAP and IPERS, and, and some of those differences will probably never go away. This level secondary ledger can actually help you do is go ahead and map the U.S. GAAP balances to IFR secondary ledger since because uh, leases are typically accounted for differently under IFRS. This will actually allow you to transform your capital lease balances uh, uh, and expenses related to them, uh, interest if it's a capital lease uh, or operating lease costs if it's uh, considered an operating for U.S. GAAP and capital for uh, IFRS actually transform those amounts transform to IFRS by using a balance level secondary ledger. However, the thing to keep in mind with the balance level secondary ledger, it is strictly a balance level representation. There is zero journal entry level drill down. So there's actually very little transparency between the secondary and the primary ledger. So someone who was actually uh, auditing the results of your secondary ledger would actually have to walk back through the accounting rules that you've set up uh, when creating the secondary ledger. Uh, no direct drill down. Next slide. The next level, journal secondary ledger. No secondary ledger not only maintains account balances, it also maintains manual journal entries. So in other words, the, 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 when you click through your uh, secondary ledger, when you drill down, you actually see all of the journal entries that you've made to your primary ledger transformed to your ledger. And as a matter of fact, depending on the way you've got your journal level secondary ledger set up, up, you set up your accounting rules such that every time you make a journal entry to your primary ledger, those will actually be transformed based on the accounting rules, mappings, et cetera, that you've set up to your secondary ledger. So your secondary ledger is going to be a full representation of your general ledger related journal entries. And uh, journal level secondary ledger posting is actually affected through the standard general ledger posting functionality. Next, there's ledger level secondary ledgers. The most transparent of all of the secondary ledgers, your level secondary ledger actually lets you maintain not only the balance level and the journal entry level, that you're able to do in the first and second types of secondary ledgers, it allows you to maintain the sub-ledger level. This is extremely useful because this allows close to full drill down transparency where you're able, you are able to drill down not only to the manual journal entries or these which are the, the closing out of the sub-ledgers to the general ledger, you can actually click through to the sub-ledger level. So, for instance, if the, the, your, you have a different chart of accounts defined for your secondary ledger, it will actually allow you to drill down to your sub-ledger level and the distributions on the uh, 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 invoices in AP, for instance, the distributions to the different accounts are actually going to show to those trans to that transformed chart of accounts. So it can actually this is very useful if you need to maintain a true transparent presentation of your primary ledger, and this is very useful in particular if you have local or uh, stat local statutory reporting requirements that require you to carry uh, your balances, your journals, and your sub-levels in a different representation. 